came to you with my heart in pieces and found a God with healing in his hands. I turned to you, put everything behind me and found a God who makes all things new. I look to you drowning in my questions and found the God who holds all wisdom and I trusted you and stepped out on the ocean you caught my hand among the waves cause you're the God of all my days each day from you and wandered in the shadows and found a God who relentlessly pursues. I hid from you, haunted by my failures, and found a God whose grace still covers me. I fell on searching God you are my answer in my blindness God you are my vision in my bondage God you are my freedom in my weakness God you
morning, University Church. We are glad that you've chosen to worship with us this morning. The words will be on the screen as we sing. I chose songs of faith, songs of confidence, songs of affirmation that God is with us no matter what. Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. Heir of salvation, purchase of God, born of his spirit, washed in his blood. This is my story. This is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior all the day long. Perfect submission, perfect delight, visions of wrath. Now burst on my side, angels descending, bring from above, echoes of mercy, whispers of love. This is my story, this is my song, praising my Savior. I know 
that he safely will carry me through no matter what evil speeds high why should i then care though the tempest may blow if jesus walks close by my side i'm living by faith in jesus above i'm trusting salvation on you we stand and we have confidence my hope is built on nothing less than Jesus blood and righteousness I dare not trust the sweetest frame but wholly lean on Jesus name on Christ the solid rock I stand lovely face I rest on his unchanging grace in every high and stormy gale my anchor holds within the veil on Christ the solid rock I stand all other ground is sinking sand all other ground is sinking sand his oath is covered at his blood support me in the whelming flood when all around my soul gives way he then is all my hope and stay on christ the solid rock i stand
freedom all my And good morning to you from University Church in Waxahachie, Texas. We're still under quarantine orders and it's difficult for our churches to gather together. So we thought we'd come to you today via the internet. I thank God that something good comes from the internet. Today is Palm Sunday. It's the day we traditionally celebrate Jesus coming into the city of Jerusalem where all of the people gathered together and began to shout Hosanna to the king and laid palm branches in front of him as he rode the little donkey into the city. Well, it's difficult for us to celebrate. This is the first time in the history of our country that we haven't been able to celebrate like we normally would. But on the inside, we still know that Jesus Christ is king and we still know that he's upon the throne of glory. In these difficult times, it's hard to stay focused on the things we need to stay focused on. Remember, the main thing needs to be the main thing. And our main thing is our relationship with Jesus Christ. As I was thinking this week, what should we talk about for a few moments this morning? I heard the Lord say, it's time. It's time. So I said, Lord, time for what? Well, it's time to, first of all, learn a daily devotional. I'm so happy that many of you, I see it on Facebook, do a daily devotional and you share that. But every person needs to learn to get spiritual strength. And that strength comes from a daily devotional. And I encourage you, take time. Do it early in the morning. Many of us have time on our hands we're not used to having. We could waste that time watching television. We could waste that time sleeping. We could, there's so many things we could do. But I encourage you today that the Lord's telling us it's time to increase that devotional time that we have with Him. This is the time when you can pray. This is the time when you can have uninterrupted Bible study. This is the time when revelation can come to you. In the darkest times is when God is the greatest and his revelation is the mightiest. So these are days when you can begin to learn things about God that you never knew before. You can begin to learn about his character, about his provision, about his protection. You can learn about his grace and his mercies and his goodness. And devotions is one way to do that. Then I heard the Lord say, it's time to inquire of the Lord. I've been reading through First and Second Samuel, and now First Kings. And I read where David would often go and inquire of God, where they would inquire the prophets. What is God saying today? Can I tell you in this hour, when we are being compelled to stay indoors, when we're being compelled to stay apart from each other, the Lord is speaking. He is not quiet. He is not silent. He speaks to us a numbers of ways. He speaks to us through his word. That's why we do a devotion every day. But he also speaks to us through impressions, through words we hear in our spirit and our consciousness. God is speaking today. And I hear the Lord saying, do not be afraid. Fear is never of God. God has not given us a spirit of fear, but of power and of love and of a sound mind. I hear the Lord say, anchor in him. We just sing about Christ being the solid rock. He is a rock we can anchor upon and everything's going to be all right. So ask the Lord, Lord, what's happening in my life? What's happening for my future? What's happening about the world around me? 
The Bible says that God never does anything but what he speaks to his prophets first. And so inquire of the Lord. God, is, his ear is tuned to the cry of the righteous and he's listening to you this morning. He's listening to what you're saying. He's listening to what you're asking. He knows that we don't know the future, but thank God he knows the future. Inquire of the Lord and he can give you direction. Another thing I hear the Lord saying, and it's a very practical thing, learn how to use social media. That doesn't mean we stay on it all the time, but learn how to use it. Because in these times when we can't gather together like we're used to gathering, then it's good for us to be able to minister to one another through social media. And I'm so glad that that's happening. If you don't know how to do it, learn how. It's simple. If, if I can do it, anybody can do it. Learn how to get on Facebook. Learn how to find out how your neighbors are doing. Learn how to speak words of encouragement to one another. And I thank God. So it's time to learn how to use social media. The next thing the Lord said to me, it's time to study the word. You know, God tells us what's going to happen. He tells us the future. I am convinced we're living in the revelation of Jesus Christ. We call it the revelation, but it's the revelation of Jesus Christ. In the midst of adversity, Jesus is Lord. In the midst of adversity, everything's going to be all right for the people of God. You see, our ticket to heaven's already been paid for, and we know where our destiny is going to be. So whatever happens in this world happens, but we know what our future is. The songwriter said, I don't know about tomorrow. I just live from day to day. I don't borrow from its sunshine, for its skies may turn to gray. I don't worry or the future, for I know what Jesus said. And today he walks beside me, for he knows what lies ahead. You and I can trust God, I guarantee you. Another thing I hear the Lord saying, get your financial house in order. If such a simple thing as a virus can shut down our economy, and shut down the world. What will it do to our finances? Get your house in order. Pay off what debt you have. Try to get yourself, and I'm talking some practical things to you now, but I hear the Lord saying, get your house in order. You know, when uh, Jesus told about the story of the 10 wise, uh, the, the five wise and the five foolish virgins, when he talked about that, he kind of gave us a lesson that we're to be prepared. Five of those virgins had plenty of oil in their laps. Five of them did not. And when the cry came, Behold, the bridegroom cometh, the five foolish ones says, Give us oil. And the five wise ones says, We don't have enough to give you oil, and then we'll be out of oil too. So they were caught without being able to respond to the bridegroom who came. Listen, be ready for whatever happens. Get your house in order. The, the, another thing the Lord spoke to me, he said, learn how to lean on me. Learn how to trust me. Learn how to rest in me. You see, none of this caught God by surprise. He knows the end from the beginning. God knows what's going to happen. God knows what's going to take place. And so lean on God. We cannot lean on our own understanding because it's too difficult to understand what's taking place today. But we can rest in Almighty God who knows what's going to happen and can lead us through. Another thing is look after each other. The church needs to be the church. And the church isn't this beautiful facility that we once met in every week. The church is the beautiful body of Christ all over the world today. Men and women are gathering together and they may not have a beautiful edifice to meet in, but they're meeting together. They may be in an apartment complex somewhere. They may be hidden in a forest somewhere. Wherever they may be, the people of God are gathering together and they're looking after each other. Let's take care of each other. Let's watch after each other. Then I hear the Lord saying, it's time to pray. Pray. If my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways. We often leave that phrase out. 
Then he said, I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive your sins and I'll heal your land. Our nation needs healing. The world around us needs healing. And if the people of God begin to cry out to God, he said his ear is tuned to the cry of the righteous. He said, call unto me and I'll hear and answer and show you great and mighty things. So it's time to pray. And what do we pray? We pray, Lord, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done. Here on earth, even as it is in heaven. We also pray for our leaders of our cities, our states, our governments, our nations. We pray for our cities. We call out to God to help our leaders. We call out to God to give wisdom to each and every one of us. Again, we pray thy kingdom come, thy will be done. The scripture says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. What God is saying, if I can find a man or woman who will cry out to me, I can change things in your behalf. So, it's time to lift up your head, throw your shoulders back, quit worrying about everything, don't hoard the toilet paper. It's time to rest in the Lord. Maybe the Lord is allowing us at this time to refuel and replenish our physical body so that we can be prepared for the journey that's ahead. I'll never forget when Elijah called down fire out of heaven and killed the prophets of Baal and the prophets of the woods. Then the queen sent word to him, by this time tomorrow, you're going to be just as dead as those prophets. And the prophet Elijah took off running, and he ran and ran and ran. But the Bible said an angel of the Lord came along and gave him a cake to eat. And in that cake, he went on the strength of it to the journey that God took him on. Let me tell you, there's strength in God today. There's hope in God today. Eat the cake of the word. Pray the word. Let the word come alive in you. And listen, don't get caught up in fear. Don't get caught up in fear at all. As a matter of fact, God's going to help us through whatever we have to go through. Our Lord is able, and he is able to do exceedingly and abundantly, and above all, you could even ask or think. These are different times for all of us, but these are also times when the revelation of God can be the greatest and when your relationship with God can be the best it's ever been. As I said last week, throw your shoulders back, lift up your head and rejoice and know that everything's going to be all right. God's still on the throne and he's coming back after a glorious church that's without spot or without wrinkle. Now may God bless you. It's a custom at the end of our services to give a blessing, and I'd like to give a blessing to you this morning. May God bless and strengthen you today. May he encourage you to know that in everything, give thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. May God bless you with the knowledge that he's going to be there to walk you through every circumstance and every situation. I bless you this morning physically, spiritually, emotionally, financially, and relationally, and relationally in Jesus' mighty name. Now, could we pray this morning? Beside me, there's a box that has several hundred names of men and women, boys and girls that we're asking God for their salvation. Could we pray for them? Lord, we ask for the salvation of every soul. We thank you that souls have already been saved through our prayers. And we thank you that more are going to be saved, especially in the days to come. In Jesus' name. Now, Lord, I pray for our congregation, our church, and those who are listening. I pray that your grace would flood our hearts and our spirits. I pray that the peace of God that passes all understanding would literally overwhelm us. I pray, Lord, that strength would arise within us. And I pray, God, that fear would be cast out. Now we pray, thy kingdom come, Thy will be done here on earth, even as it is in heaven. May God go with you. God bless you.
Is it possible to come back on without it being looking stupid? Don't forget your tithe and your offerings. In these difficult times, uh, the bills keep coming into the church. We have utility bills. We have mortgage payments. We're, we're paying our salaries. So don't forget, mail in your tithe and offerings, give online, bring them by, but get your tithe and your offerings in. May God bless you. Great is thy faithfulness, O God, my Father. There is no shadow of turning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou Oh,
returning with thee. Thou changest not thy compassions, they fail not. As thou hast been, not for See